This week on Primo's Truth About Hunting. The Rocky Mountains here in Southern Colorado. And to stalk up on him, we've been so close. That's what I call a no cut, buddy. I had one tree to draw behind, and he walked straight toward us. I can't take too much of that. My heart ain't strong enough. Look at the mass on this joker. Thank you, Lord. I was with him. I don't know. I put out every pin I had on him, let it rip. <laughs> About Honey is brought to you by Bushnell, Matthews, Rage, Cabela's, Yeti Coolers, Squincher, Block Target, Ozonics, Black Gold, Ripcord, and Primo's Honey. Speak the language. Rocky Mountains, oh what beauty, especially in late September and early October when the aspen leaves are turning gold and the bulls are beautiful. It's what we look forward to all year long, trying to get back to the mountains to chase elk and witness God's hand. This is High Country. Got it right, Daddy. Got the hunt, get up, ready. So I got a little movie screen in mind. I'll just watch it as it unfolds right here. <laughs> Thanks, fast. We're at 10,200 feet right now. Code and Chris and Will now. And, and we're getting tuned up. Boy, it's been a good stop for us for a lot of years, hasn't it? It's a good place. The man's quiet. Hey, oh, it's the 21st, I yep, think. 21st. 21st of September. And in the morning, <clears throat> me and Will are going to be fighting for the I'm good spot. I'm going to take. <laughs> <laughs> Listening to you. You just heard? Oh, yeah, you are. <clears throat> I'm glad I'm with Chris. Got me some ears. 
Yeah, boy, he can, he can hear. <laughs> I just hear one. He can hear that at 50 yards. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you? Turkey, you dumb. No. <laughs> that was a new one. Yeah, probably would. <laughs> I already put my, I already put my boat to bed for the evening. But, well, I'm gonna shoot at 60 one time. Ooh. You know why? Cause I'm good. <laughs> I'm shooting at 20, because I got two dogs with me, and he's calling. <laughs> oh, I think, think I better get my bow. I left my bow out there. <laughs> Quit it. <laughs> Turn the camera off. This segment of Truth About Hunting was brought to you by Mossy Oaks Native Nurseries and Biologic and Summit Tree Stands. I told my man in Pat. I was going to the Rocky Mountains to hunt him. He's, he's got some just giant incredible thirds. Mess. But you gotta try, we had to win. My dad used to take me hunting. Never got a deer. So I kind of gave up. Then I got this Primo's can. And I watched their videos. Opening day, 2005. As the sun started to come up and the light started to hit the, the forest floor, I turned the can a few times. And then I heard it sounded like a freight train coming through the woods. I knew that was my deer, then he walked away. I went back home. I wasn't sleeping. I was too amped up, too anxious about that deer. So I packed up my stuff and I went back out in the woods. Took the can, gave a couple calls on it, and there he was. I leveled down and I took the shot. And I knew right then, I got him. I hit him. So I pick up my phone and I call my dad. I said, Dad, guess what? I got a deer. My dad taught me the woods, but Primo's taught me to hunt. The Primo's can speak the language. Rage, the rear deploying broadhead with devastating options. The most lethal broadhead on the market. An authority on laceration. The most popular broadhead ever made. Get right to the point. Unleash devastating killing power. Get the kill every time. Wreak havoc with every shot. Killing power with precision accuracy. Expand your kill zone with rage. Before experiencing it, you won't know dependability. Unless you've drawn it, you haven't felt smooth. Until you shoot it, you've yet to be this accurate. The Matthews Creed. Rethink your possibilities. Who's that? It's a beautiful high country afternoon right here in Southern Colorado. Cody, Justin, and myself were enjoying a Rocky Mountain sunset. We were calling a little bit, and this bull started responding from below us. Oh my goodness, we had to move fast. We like to get the collar back 75 to 150 yards, but Justin can't get more than 35 or 40 yards when he has to sit down, cause this bull is coming in fast.
That's what I call a kill cook, buddy. <laughs> Justin! You, you the man! You the man! That's Jeremiah himself right there. Baby. <laughs> is that not a pretty bull? He is gorgeous. He's gorgeous. Oh, he, come, he came a long way. How far? He was way. I saw him come right there and then yeah. he turned around. I just shut up because I thought I'm not going to let him know where I'm at. Can you believe oh. this big old joker was by himself? Yeah. I didn't think there was any way he was going to get here in time. He was so far over there. And the wind, it should have been going down. Yeah. <laughs> oh, what a beauty. Look at the mass on this joker. He's got everything. Oh, my goodness. Look at the force. Good shot. You're so concentrating on that bull. I thought there was no way. I mean, he was so far away. I didn't think there was any way. Southern Colorado is the place to be. I told my man and pap I was going to the Rocky Mountains to hunt elk. Mama Primo said, son, stays here. Here's where the peoples is. I said, Mama Primo, the Rocky Mountains is the marrow of the world. And you know what? I was right. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you for saving me and allowing me to live this life. Absolutely. Absolutely. Father, we just thank you for the privilege that you give us to be in country that is your country and that is such a special place in our hearts and for the friendships that hunting creates and the camaraderie. And we thank you for the privilege of taking a bull like this and we don't take it lightly. And we just praise you for who you are in our lives and for the health and the families that you give us and allow us to do this that we love so much. And Lord, I'd like to say that that song you gave to me a couple of years ago, sung by the, I believe their name is the Gateway. The more I seek you, the more I find you. And how true that is, Lord. In Christ's name, we thank you, praise you, we fear you. And we ask you to give us all safe travel down to camp and a safe travel home in the next few days. In Christ's name, amen. Amen. This segment of Truth About Hunting was brought to you by Smokehouse Salt Company and tight spot arrow quivers. We're going to a park surrounded by aspens, beautiful place where I killed a bull two years ago. And he walked straight toward us. I wouldn't have bet 10 cents that that would have worked. This ain't Hollywood. It's hunts as they really happen. All the hits and misses. But no one wants to be that guy that misses. Not even close. <laughs> So we stepped up to the world's best range finder and started shooting like never before. So now if you are that guy, you don't even have an excuse. He swiped my range finder. Ha! <laughs> the Truth Range Finder by Bushnell. Register to win the truth about range finder sweepstakes at bushnell.com.
waited for all year long takes seconds to play out. For months now, you've been honing your skills and pushing yourself to the limits of perfection. The entire line of Glendale Bucks feature a massive four-sided shooting core that takes thousands of shots for the longest lasting, most realistic target. So when the months turn to seconds, you can answer the call. Glendale, the biggest and toughest 3D targets in the universe. Minute is brought to you by Polaris Ranger EV. We often talk about what sounds to make on a bugle, but let's talk about what bugles to use in different situations. If I'm on the side of a mountain and I'm trying to locate a bull, this is when I want to use the biggest and loudest bugle I can use. This will allow me to cut through the wind or just have more volume to reach the other side of the mountain. Once we have him located, it's time to close the distance. This is when I want to put away the big boy and grab a smaller, more compact bugle. This will allow me to use it once the bull has closed the distance because not all bulls are aggressive. I definitely don't want to blow him out or challenge him just yet. If you've gotten him close, but he won't commit, this is the time to pull the big loud bugle back out and hit him with a challenge. This will often make him think that a herd bull has come to steal his cows. Cows, especially the lead cow, they control the herd and they determine where the herd's gonna go. And that's how we speak the language. Well, what a great hunt that was with Will. You know, they had fun up there, him and Justin and Cody, and it was it was a lot of fun for me to watch to see, see his excitement. But this morning, Chris and Mike and I, we're going to a, a park surrounded by aspens, beautiful place where I killed a bull two years ago. And typically, it's you can count on hearing some bugles, and hopefully we'll be able to find them and get on. Brad and Chris, it seems, have found a park full of big, loud, mild, bugling bulls. They have worked their way into position at the outer edge of the park. But with all the action happening, it's going to be hard to call a bull in close. Brad and Chris are literally surrounded. With so many bulls in this valley, we're bound to get on one sooner or later. When we come back, I'm gonna put the camera on my shoulder and we're gonna fall back on the old saying, if you can't call it, crawl it. This segment of Truth About Hunting was brought to you by ammo to go and C Spire Wireless. I wouldn't have bet 10 cents that that would have worked. And to stalk up on him, we've been so close. We've been on some good ones, haven't we, buddy? That might be the best one. That's the best one. Watch the wind trackers. This big buck is straight downwind of the hunter. That typically means the buck is gone, but not with those onyx. 
Ozonix is the in-the-field ozone generator. It blankets your scent zone with scent-destroying ozone so deer won't smell you. <laughs> this is amazing. The wind tracker almost hits the deer in the nose. Ozonix works, and it's guaranteed. Learn more at ozonixhunting.com. If I was a steel worker, I'd use Squincher because staying hydrated means staying productive. If I work construction, I drink Squincher because it has more potassium and half the sodium. If I was a firefighter, I'd drink Squincher because it's formulated to drink every day. If I work the rail, I'd drink Squincher because of the taste. But we're all hunters and we drink Squincher because it's what America's workers drink. Squincher, hydration that works. Man, we got really close to that big bull, and he, he goes off and chases a cow off, but we keep hunting. We, we hear these other elk up there bugling, and boy, we get in there, and we're, we're crawling. Chris has got the camera, and boy, I'm, I'm crawling. We get in position, and it is, the rut is in full swing. So we take off, and we know about an, there's another little hidden meadow up higher where the rest of those elk are bugling, and that's where we're headed. You did awesome. Hey, what? The bull was coming, and he started going behind you, so I was switching shoulders. By the time you let go. What would Primo say? I can't do too much of that. <laughs> My heart ain't strong enough. <laughs> awesome, man. Golly. And to stalk up on him. We've been so close, Chris. Look at these aspens. Look at this country. Hey, look at that bull. That beautiful bull. <laughs> oh, God. I, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have bet 10 cents that that would have worked, but you got to try. We had to win. He came right That's to us. That's a giant man. bull. Is that awesome? Thank you, buddy. We've been on some great hunts over the years. Man, I'm telling you. That is the best. Are you crazy? Oh, my God. That was awesome, man. That was a giant bull. You and him, everything in the frame. Hey. I'm just, glad you did. I don't know. He's like, he was right there. I was yeah. switching over Brad's shoulder. Were you? When I went around like this, he shot, but then as soon as he run out, I mean, I didn't get the air hitting him. How far uh, was he? Chris said, how far was he? I said, I don't know. I'll put every pin on him and let him hit. <laughs> Brad. Look what we did. <laughs> we did it. Golly. Look at that shot. Perfect. Look at the mass. Oh, he smoke. That's. That's the prettiest bull I've ever been close to right there. Man, guys, look, I know I already did this one. <laughs> Do it again. With a little mud Good on job, man. Good job, man. <laughs> Holy smoke. Chris, we've been on some good ones, haven't we, buddy? Dang it, I man. think that might be the best one. That's the best one. How far to go, maybe 50, 60 yeah. yards? Yeah. He still didn't know what, what was up. He just doop. He's like, what was that? And then he just... Yeah, Mike called and stopped yeah. him. You know, that's that's something else when you're elk hunting. And you, you shoot a bull like that, 
you know, don't get too, a lot of times we'll get too excited to oh, just to call and just, meow, 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 just make a quick call or bugle and he'll turn around and I'll, usually when you hit him like that and you oh, get him yeah. to stop, that's where they fall. That's awesome. Primos, being of sound mind and broke back, leaveth my Matthew's helium to whatever finds it. It killed the elk that killed me. God hope it be a God fearing man. Anyways, I am dead. Wow. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Thanks for being with us on The Truth and sharing with us what we love and cherish so much, this great sport of hunting. Join us again as we continue the tradition of hunting and just living the outdoor lifestyle. God willing, we'll see you next week.